So, uh, welcome back. Uh, let's talk a bit about fog, um, because fog is uh, pretty important for low poly scenes. Um, so let's talk first about why should you use fog, um, because you never use it, right? Um, this is a lot of examples, like I uh, searched through my gallery and almost every second um, image has some sort of fog effect in there. Now here it is pretty clear and we see um, the first effect that our fog has um, immediately. So fog is really really good for um, showing off scale. Like if these uh, mountains back there weren't so whitish and foggy um, you couldn't really grasp that they are so far away. Um, so, so fog is really, really nice for creating atmosphere. Yeah, this is um, um, and and um, not only atmosphere, but a sense of scale. That that is the main point there. Um, yeah, these are different examples. You can see very often I have just a very, very subtle effect. Like you notice it um, really when you look down here at the pillars. Because it's it's very subtle, but they are a bit uh, more whitish. Um, here again, very very subtle. Not that strong, but I wanted to get a bit more flat feeling here. Um, because if you want to have a really flat feeling, then um, fog is good still, but you should use it more subtle. Yeah, here again, the island, big there. Very very foggy. Um, yes, this is a different fog effect. I will talk about uh, that later because there are actually two different um, ways to create fog. I don't know, but yeah, it's it. You don't really see it that much, but it adds to the atmosphere definitely. Here it is really strong. If you look down here, you can see that it uh, really shows um, the overlapping of these uh, little hills, so you can. Uh, immediately see that this one is in front because it is very dark and it's fading uh, more and more into orangish tones until it's uh, way back there and very yeah orangish. Um, very old example, maybe the first one where I used the fog, <coughs> but again um, very good for showing off that this mountain is actually very very far away. It almost looks like the sky so um, yeah, it's it's a way to give the sky more detail while it's still having a very um, bright um, surface in the background. Here it is very good for for atmosphere and feeling. Um, this fog over here is very um, reddish. You don't really see that see it uh, that much, but it has a um, reddish tone to it. So it helps a bit to. Um, yeah, draw the attention to this uh, center of the image and to build a bit of contrast. So you can even use colored fog uh, probably. Here it is uh, very subtle again, um, but if you look back here again, there's fog. And maybe that uh, even adds to a kind of feeling like uh, wet air, which it's good for for water scenes and for landscapes, maybe a morning scene or something. It uh, really adds to the feeling of the image. Um, and this one um, is using fog as well to show the scale. Um, but it is uh, quite good because this as, uh, example has a huge problem, and that is, um, wait. Can't we zoom in? Okay, um, let's let's go out of this view and look at it this way. Um, if we zoom in here, you can see it has a whitish border, and that is an accident. Uh, I didn't want to have that happen, but it did happen. Of course, there are two ways uh, to create fog and blender. One is using the Z buffer, which I will show you first, and then we are talking about the um, real physical volumetric uh, fog. Now um, the Z buffer has some problems with transparency. 
say I uh, wouldn't use it in combination with well a transparent image um, yeah but let's look into that and uh, see how to set it up okay so um, this is the finished setup of the uh, Z buffer fork um, down here you can see the result of out um, the fork and I will plug this into here and look at the image yeah you immediately, uh, immediately get that uh, sense of, of depth so um, this is the finished result if you just want to copy this you can but I will um, explain everything in detail so um, the way you get to that point is you start off in your like default blender scene and then you can either go from default to compositing or you just hit control and left arrow key that way you uh, automatically uh, go to compositing which is really really um, nice and much faster so um, just learn that um, it helps a lot so this is the finished result but um, I will delete everything except the ones that are here by default. Um, so to orientate ourselves, down here is the uh, 3D scene still. This is our render preview and this is, um, this is how it should look like when you start. Um, it's just our node editor for the rendered scene. If it doesn't look like this, uh, down here, um, go to compositing, to this tab, and then of course enable use nodes, that way these default uh, nodes get created. <coughs> so, now um, down here we can always see what happens, but um, a nicer way is to go to, uh, by the way, shift A to create new things. Um, converter and no to output where's output there uh, VR then you can shift um, yeah drag over there and just make a new extension and enable backdrop that way we get this uh, preview in the background as well which is nice because then we can just make um, our workspace a, big, uh, a bit bigger and really use this uh, space. So now what I want to show you is if I drag this Z value and plug it in here, um, everything is white. But um, this Z value essentially uh, knows how far the, um, the pixel is away from the camera. So if we um, Again, Shift A, create a converter math node, and uh, plug that between here. Um, because the problem now is this is maybe uh, 200 uh, Blender units away, and 200 is greater than one, so it's always white because like one is white and zero is black. Um, that is why we should divide it by let's say 200 yeah that's quite nice and it looks it looks so cool doesn't it um you should find a value there where like the uh, thing that is furthest way back is white and yeah so so that is uh what we're searching for like a hundred is better because um the contrast is a bit higher so, and then we can uh, plug in a converter color ramp, which essentially helps us uh, with customizing it later on. Just plug it in there. I will show you how to use it in a second. Um, and then we're going to add a color mix back here 
between our original image using this as the factor and uh, the color of your fork. Now you can use white, you could also use pff, like red or essentially any color. Um, but what I would uh, recommend you to do is to mimic a bit uh, the sky color. So I always go with a bit bluish kind of color or like if you remember the um, Halloween scene, use a bit uh, reddish color can work as well. So um, this seems like a good color. Yeah. And now what we now this this is fine. You know, it uh, it could be finished. But our color ramp is here. Um, so that we can customize it a bit more. Now this essentially tells us um, how strong the um, focus in certain areas. So if I drag this this black one back there, you can see that the um, kind of front line of the fork is coming closer or uh, going more back. So I would set that um, so that the uh, front stuff is still quite unaffected, like this this first row of houses. Um, yeah, then we can use uh, a second one to say that we want to make the um, yeah, the mosque uh, a bit brighter as well. Now you could um, think about it as this. This line represents the depth. So this is um, right up to the camera and this is way back uh, in the sky over there. Um, and the brightness of um, the certain spot stands for the uh, strength of the fog. Um, yeah, if you don't understand that, uh, please uh, write a comment under this video or something um, because it's it's clear to me but I <laughs> I'm not sure how to explain it um, so but what I want to do is I want to make the sky a bit clearer again that is why I will add another node right back here and then try to set it where the sky is which is roundabout there because you can see um, if I change this, it only affects the uh, sky back there. And then I can just say, yeah, how much the sky is affected by the fog. And I want it to be a bit less because I still want a bit of blue in there. And maybe I will also tone this down to reduce the overall strength of the mountains and the back. Uh, or further away area. So, and that's it. Um, really easy to use. Um, be careful with um, two things. I hope I didn't forget them. Blur. Blur can be problematic and also transparency. If you have like a transparent film over here. Now that, <laughs> yeah, it is enabled but it is uh, enabled for me as standard, but um, I don't have a transparent um, sky. You can also see that it um, might do some problems with anti-aliasing, like um, in this kind of area. You can um, change that by reducing this Gaussian uh, jitter, but that reduces the quality of the image. So. Um, just don't use it with blur or um, transparency. So uh, next one is the um, physically correct fog. So uh, let's talk about that. So uh, first of all, let's talk about volume or scatter or volumetric materials in general. Um, you can see over here, um, this is just a a uh, random scene, a uh, cycle scene. Uh, you have the surface node, which is normally diffuse. Um, 
but I uh, removed this and added a volume uh, shader instead. You can also see this in the um, node editor uh, for the material over here. So uh, this way we create um, a material that is based on the volume. And volume scatter essentially uh, takes the light, which is uh, done using rays, as we learned, and while they pass through um, from the sun lamp, uh, sometimes they get scattered, so they are reflected into a different direction. Now, um, you can also add a color to this, which means uh, when they are uh, being reflected, they get a yeah, color of some sort. Um, you can change the density, which essentially um, yeah, um, predicts the um, probability of the ray that is being reflected. So a very high one, like five, almost looks diffuse because um, it has a very high probability of being deflected somewhere. So uh, you can't really see through it, but something like 0 0.1 or 0 0.5 would even work as well. Um, it's very low, so the probability is very low that the ray is being uh, reflected, so it might as well pass through. Um, so that is the density. I guess that is pretty straightforward. Uh, the more complicated one is uh, the anisotropy. So let's say this is one, um, and I will switch to rendered view mode here. Um, that will probably cause some problems on YouTube. I'm sorry for that, but um, compression can't handle <coughs> noise very well. So and you can see um, the light passes through only in one direction. If it's scattered, it's um, really close to our original sun lamp. Now if we uh, increase this, uh, and it's a uh, decrease this to, let's say, 0.95. It already gets bigger. Let's set it to uh, 0.98 so I can show my point. Um, it gets scattered more, but um, it's still not really a lot. So um, the light passes through and it gets scattered uh, based on a probability. And if the anisotropy is 1, it goes almost in the same direction. If it is like close to 1, it is yeah close to that, it creates a type of cone over here. If it is um, 0, it can scatter in all directions, which I can show you. Um, so that's, that's like a, similar to a normal fog. Not quite, uh, it has a slight anisotropy. Um, and if it's negative, like uh, minus 0.5 or something, it gets reflected in the uh, opposite way. And if it's like minus 1, it only gets uh, reflected into the position where the uh, sun is. So in this case, the sun is um, behind us. Um, so, but this material cannot only be applied to objects, that would work quite well. We could just add a cube over our scene, uh, but you can also add it to the world. Um, and that is where things start to get interesting. Um, because over here, like in the world tab, you can set it from background to, where is it, volume scatter. And this very the entire world um, get some scattering. So you probably uh, remember this image. This is using this uh, volumetric type of effect. And you can immediately see that um, if you look like at the light source, you can see um, that it just scatters around. It is uh, smooth, it is soft, like it is the light that is invisible um, or something. Because um, volume scatter immediately uh, makes light sources visible because yeah, the light leaves a kind of trail. Um, so the setup over here is 
quite complicated. You have like 200 different cones now. It's just three, uh, but I will hide those. Um, by the way, don't use sun lamps. Sun lamps are pretty weak because they need to um, essentially pass through um, an infinite amount of space until they hit somewhere because the sun lamp doesn't have a position that comes from the environment. Um, so spotlights, uh, point lights, um, area lights are pretty good with um, this type of fork, but um, sun lamps, not really, don't, don't use them. Um, also, they don't make a very nice effect because there's not a single light source. Um, so, uh, this is the scene and this is our world material. Now, this is a bit uh, different. This, uh, I learned this uh, technique from Renata Martinez, which I will I'll link over here. Um, definitely check him out. He's probably one of the greatest Blender artists out there. Um, now this technique is to speed up um, the rendering process. So what are we doing here? We're having our world material, which is on the surface, nice background material that is pretty straightforward. Um, and the volume is made out of a mix shader. So it is being mixed between background material, which is essentially like no material transparent kind of thing, um, and volume scatter, um, which yeah, gives us this uh, light scattering effect. And we um, only use it for camera rays. So if a camera um, sends out a ray, it can be scattered, but after that it doesn't get scattered a second time. That reduces so much noise and is so much faster that it is um, really nice to use. It also um, doesn't really reduce the quality of the image because um, most of the time if it uh, gets scattered a second time, it doesn't matter that much because the uh, light isn't strong enough. Um, so. I would uh, really recommend you to use this setup. So you can get this node in input or light path or something. Where is it? Yeah, light path. Uh, these ones, of course, under shaders. Uh, make shaders as well, and that's it. So um, another tip, set the density very low. If you, this might be too low because yeah, you see it a bit, but before could have been a bit stronger, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Just um, play around with this a bit. I recommend you to do uh, test renders on uh, a very low resolution percentage, but quite a high um, uh, samples, because that uh, will give you better results. Also, branched path tracing almost forgot that. Uh, path tracing is like the default, but branched uh, path tracing is a bit nicer because you can tweak this volume tab, um, which essentially uh, tells cycles do a bit more work on the um, volume ray tracing because that creates a lot of noise. Diffuse, yeah, you can you can render that quite well and quite fast, so don't use uh, uh, that much um, capacities on that. So volume, pretty good. Um, crank that value a bit up. Um, yeah, I will leave it as it was. So um, I would also recommend you to do the uh, anisotropy a bit higher than zero, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, uh, because I uh, didn't do that which is sad because I didn't know what it did. Um, but cranking it a bit up should probably make your scene look a bit better because um, it scatters stronger um, in the direction of the light source. Um, so this is the second way of creating fog. Um, this works with everything um, because it's physically based and uh, really accurate. 
but it takes a lot of time to render. So um, do think about that and really do test renders because this takes a lot of time. Like I have, um, yeah, I have enabled 128 base samples, which then gets multiplied by 16 for the volume, which is like the uh, 28 times 16. Yeah, that is 2000. That is like the equivalent of uh, uh, 2000 samples. Shakes quite a lot of time if you uh, don't have a really good graphics card. So, I hope this uh, helped you out. Um, try this, try this not only for low poly, but every kind of style because it really helps. Um, and yes, that's it. See you in the uh, next episode, which is about um, post-processing, which is the last episode.